I think we need to talk about the guy who was trying to chip a road sign off the wall earlier. Yes, we do. That was yeah. weird, wasn't it? Um, we didn't capture it on video, sadly. We were just no. all very intimidated by him. I mean, you made the good point at first. So we saw, I mean, he was just, let's make it clear, this was not some sort of council workman. This no, was a man, man in jeans. who was the man in jeans who was stealing uh, in broad daylight near the Asda uh, going towards Bedminster. We uh, heard him sort of, clanking with like a hammer and chisel and mikey said what was far more reasonable in terms of theft yes uh oh, i think he's stealing the pipe because there's a lot of value in like lead and copper and stuff and i was like oh yeah he will be won't he yeah and it became apparent that no no he was chiseling underneath like an old kind of iron like cast iron street sign that's yeah. probably been there for decades um I, yeah. I guess to steal it for scrap or maybe I like to think even... there's some kind of sentimental value yeah. to that street to him. But, um... Or he's annoyed at the street. Cause it was called like N Nelson Street or something, is yeah, it? Yeah, uh, yeah. So maybe he doesn't... I think we might be giving him too much credit. Like the yes, Admiral yes. at all. Maybe. He's got he issues hates with <laughs> Admiral Lord Nelson. <laughs> Screw me up insurance. Uh. Yeah. It was just so brazen, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. No just... one was stopping him because why would they yeah. no yeah he just he didn't seem very well and he was just really hammering away like bits of old red brick were coming off yeah. from underneath it like he was just he was going home with that street sign we'll have really to see weird. if it's gone when we yeah, yeah true we yeah we go that way again while we're here i don't know but we might go that way on the bus yeah all the way back to the airport so well, like, there's not much money in scrap like i think at most he's gonna get a fiver for that sign i don't know if it's worth it like he was putting a lot of effort into that yeah yeah I suppose mm. it depends how desperate you are. There's an house mm. around the corner. Steal a bottle of beer or something. Oh, right. yeah. so get your money back. I did have that once mm. um, at my local Tesco. Um, I was on. My, like, it was a nice sunny day, so I thought, I'm going to get some lunch from Tesco and sit on the green. Yeah. And while I was sat there, I just saw a man sprinting from Tesco wearing a tutu with two crates of beer on his arm. Brilliant. <laughs> and just straight off in the distance. The tutu and the staff all came out after him. Like, ah, fair. What a hero. Yeah. The tutu is what gave him the bravery to, yeah. <laughs> to pull the trigger. You, know? yeah, you can run faster in a tutu. Yeah, it's yeah. like a superhero cape makes you fly. Mm -hmm. A tutu makes you run fast. Yeah. It does. Yeah. It's a known is. known fact. That is fact. Yeah. Did you change the lens on here, Michael? In the I didn't. I tried, but it didn't uh, really work. I think okay. I, I did this this long setup for a reason. So you're maybe I'm still, I'm just like I'm still really far away. Maybe I'll like zoom in your head on the video. Yeah. 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 Well, hello everyone who's listening to this and not watching it. You should be watching it because you should. you'll be able to see us. We're all together mm. again. For episode 100. 100. We've done it. We it. Uh, but because of the way the camera's set up and that we're on a very long table, <laughs> I look like I'm really far away. Uh, so, hello, hello. All the way over there. Hello. And uh, if you are listening to the audio version, maybe you can watch the video version as well. Yeah. yeah that's not? a viable option. It's a rare <laughs> treat. Should we? Um, yeah. yeah. I think we should. Okay. Roll that music. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Poddy. It's the official. Official. Um, Idiots. Idiots. Podcast. Podcast. Did your phone vibrate as you hit the table? No, I just hit it that hard. All oh, right. I thought I had a little... <laughs> <laughs> it's a conversational podcast where we take some questions from you at home and obey the law of the three ers, where everybody brings a, a thing along to talk, talk about. about. I'm Ben. I'm Peter. <laughs> and I'm Michael. Oh, Peter looked at me there? there made me panic. <laughs> I don't know. I, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm really... I'm, I'm slowly running out of juice for the day, but I'm very excited for episode 100. So. Can we try you? Know, can we try you, me, then, Peter? Yeah, just, just just for a change for a big episode 100 blowout. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm Ben. I'm Michael, and I'm Peter. There you go. Okay, I like that. That's how does, nice. how does that feel? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do good. you want to have Do you want to have a call going last now, Ben? Yeah. <laughs> I'm Michael. I'm Peter. And I'm Ben. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> that's fun. That all feels good. Yeah, mm -hmm. Feels good, man. Big all, fan. All feels good. Yeah. Welcome to episode 100. Mm. Uh, a little bit of admin before we get started, because people ask stupid things and they don't listen, quite frankly. Mm. Wow. We've already recorded episode 50. Yeah. You listened yes. to that last fortnight. Mm. We haven't yet recorded episode 99, but you listened to that four weeks ago. Yeah. If the donations are out of order, that's why. If you donated 
before this episode released, but after we recorded, it won't be in this episode. It will be in episode 101 because we shot them all together. Yeah. Hope that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your understanding. If some really big news story happened around the time of episode 99 that we should constantly be referring to at all times because it's, you know, the the zeitgeist right now. It's on everyone's Billy Ray Cyrus. Do you see Billy Ray Cyrus is getting divorced? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. No, Did you see that he is getting divorced? Is he? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was what you were going to say. Hopefully that's not uh, the beginning of a long court Scandal. case a prediction yeah Scandal where he, where he murders someone or has murdered someone yeah i just can't stay married to a man who kicks dogs who's murdered someone <laughs> why does why is it always with the kicking dogs stop kicking guy? dogs stop Please. kicking I've the dogs already. stop you kicking dogs stealing Willing. their squeaky toys as well that's ridiculous <laughs> oh poor peg <laughs> poor peg uh, hey did you know if you went to streamlabs.com forward slash podiats donations and donated three pounds or more you would have gotten a shout out at the beginning and the end of this episode podcast episode podcast episode 100 uh, these were split equally between episode 50 and 100 as we're recording the bank to bank so thank you in advance thank to the you. pod squad mikey's gonna start I'm gonna start it off yeah <laughs> we start with mr blobby joins the bobby <laughs> i like uh, it that's good mm-hmm. incredibly generous um i think they've missed a y out here so it's sex young homosexual <laughs> <laughs> Good. Thank you very much, section homosexual. They say, I haven't donated in a while, but this is a big one, brackets two episodes. I know it's cliche at this point, but you boys help my mental health a lot. Oh. My only regret is we can't be friends IRL since I'm in the colonies, perpetual oh. enemies and all that. Keys, keys. Keys, keys. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. You sex young homosexual. Pen. Sorry, Ben does not fuck smash my door. What? What? Ben does not fo- fuck, spell F-O-K, mm-hmm. smash my door. What does that mean? I have no idea. Thank you very much. Right. What does that mean? <laughs> we don't know what that means. What does that mean? Mr. Blobby becomes a therapist. That's good. That's good. Hot bo- blobby blobby blobby. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see that. He pushes his reading glasses up his nose and his chair breaks or something. He's got like a little goatee. Yeah. He just falls onto the patient. <laughs> Blob, if Mr. Blobby had a goatee, he would be a Russian nesting doll of uh, Noel. <laughs> yeah, he would, wouldn't he? Noel is inside him. With his beard. And they've got exactly the same hair. Because Noel Evans is small as well. Yeah. So it would be even funnier. Oh, God. The Noel inside my blobby. (laughs) Oh, God. Hot blue beet. Cherry. Honey linear. The generous, friendly tree. And they say, hi, boys. Hi. Poddy has helped me get through a lot of nights full of design work at uni. Mm -hmm. I'm now settled in my first job as a graduate, and it feels like time to pay it back. Thanks for all the laughs. Your friendly neighbourhood landscape architect. 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 (laughs) It's Neil. (laughs) Your friendly neighbourhood landscape architect, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Thank thank you, you, Ben. Thank Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Peter. Don't you eat those plops. (laughs) The generous big jewel. And they say... Sorry, was this someone called Don't You Eat Those Plops? Don't yeah. you eat those, don't you you eat eat those, those plops? plops? I've told you before. <laughs> What's that from? That's us, isn't it? Don't You Eat Those Plops? That rings so many bells. Really? We say something hysterical every day. Oh, oh, this is just because I, it's part of I, the I noise. I just can't keep track, quite frankly. Don't you eat those plops? Don't, don't you eat those plops? Are you not just thinking of, now, homie, don't you eat that pie? <laughs> now, homie, don't you eat that pie? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. It's going to come to me. It's going to come to me. The generous Big Joe. They say, you finally made it. Ah, Thank you so much for providing endless entertainment to so many of us. I've had a few family members change. Over, oh. oh, no, that kind uh. of change. Oh, no. Change over the last few years. <laughs> not laughing. I'm not Grandma laughing. Grandma is changing. <laughs> oh. Grandma changed. Oh, no. <laughs> no. No. Um, but it is always, and oh God, I can't do this. But it is always a nice escape to wind down listening to a new podiatist every couple of weeks. I'm sorry for your changing family. You're, mm. you're, they're in our thoughts. Thank yeah, you, sorry. thank Absolutely. you, Big Joe. Absolutely, Big Joe too. <laughs> Electric Boogaloo, and they've said again. Whatever happens in the future. Vidiots will be remembered by many wonderful members of Pod Squad, oh. other listeners of Podiots, and the Triple Jump community. Yes. Ben, Peter, Mikey, mm. yes. thank you. Uh. 
so much. Yeah, you're welcome. And you're welcome. We have a very cheeky, very last minute donation that just came in hot off the press. Oh, oh just made it. Well done. From Gregor Monkey and Monkey Chippy. And they say, hopefully this isn't too late. If it is, well, whatever. Just take our money, brackets, in our best Butterfield. Uh, just take our money. Take our <laughs> whatever. Butter. Take our butter. butter. Our butter. <laughs> Congratulations on your 50th episode. Thank Thanks. You. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much, you both. Uh, we've also got, um, you know, it's all about the coom, who was very mm-hmm. generous and said, happy big episodes, boys. If only Ben and Peter didn't cause the pandemic to happen in the yeah. kitchen that one day, we could true. have had this earlier. But hey, we got there in the end. Here's 250 slash 100. Uh, more of these. And probably some more after that. Probably. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank, um, you. Thank you. Uh, Emily Lemons, Specky Becky, an extra 50s worth of donation. <laughs> Katie Kinsolo, Vidiots Might Be a Cult. And Raindrop Joy, Star Scourge Babalooni, who was very generous and said, Happy 50th slash 100th episode and congratulations on such an amazing milestone. Please enjoy the monies and thank you for all you do, Keys Keys. Uh, Fintristam, Hawkman 105, and Internet Explorer, who was very generous and said, Hey boys, just noticed a new upload called Vidiots is Changing. Hope it's the return of memory cards. I'll watch it after I read this article about DBP wrestling. Sounds wild. Thank you. Thank you. What is going on? Hello? Can, can, do you want me to just lie on the table? Yeah, can you just lie on the table? Sorry, I just realised that the question post was still up and we normally take that down. Yes. Oh, yeah. And also we haven't posted a Dave. We need a Dave. So I'm just posting a, a photo of us and just saying, hey, we're recording now, no Dave. Yeah. It just occurred to me that I didn't do my... Perfect. That's a good one. That's a keeper. Like it. <laughs> you good? You didn't stand there though. Oh, brilliant. Well, I did it in Twitter refreshed and deleted everything I typed. Oh. Michael, you're gonna to need to do that again, bud. Need a new photo. Okay, need a new. Yeah, here we go. We're taking. Michael's climbing on the table so we can all get a selfie. Well, that's just a photo of the wall, Ben. Let's turn there. There we go. Grand. <laughs> just in case. Have you have you finished reading your? I have. Yeah, my my troop is done. Damn. Okay. Can you type? No, Dave, but we're recording episodes 50 and 100 right now. I can, I'll do it. Wonderful. Uh, okay, th- here's the fast crew. Very, very, th- very thank you to No Clue, <laughs> Prince Beefcakes, Stroke My Trent, please, Ben. Someone is really just thirsty as fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Will you please sort yourself <laughs> out? Serene is a birch bitch. Now, we had this before, and there was some uh, explanation given that birch bitch is how the two participants in this particular uh, romantic partnership refer to each other as a term oh. of endearment. Okay, that's so there we are. Okay, good. that's that's fine. Callum and Jess, Jester the Jester the Rogue, the very generous Scots cool hugs McSnuggies. Cute. He said, I gave my grandma a vidiot's mug. I gave my grandpa a vidiot's mug and he broke it trying to make plum dumplings in it. <laughs> <laughs> plum dumplings. Plumplings. <laughs> Plumplings, yeah. <laughs> Uh, right. And uh, Lady Masquerade and the very, very generous Okaroo127 who said, Hey guys, or girls, or girls. thanks for making Podiots. It is still my favourite thing to listen to whilst woodworking. Oh. I'll have to post some pictures to Twitter so you can see what you all have helped me make. Thanks. Cute. I like the idea that they're using really loud, they're using like a lathe and it's just going like, <laughs> <laughs> and every can't so often hear they a word. Hear, yeah. Just fart noises coming from their phone or whatever. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Pod Squad. Thank you. Uh, remember, streamlabs.com forward slash podiots donations, three pounds or more to get a shout out at the beginning and the end of the show. And if you're listening to this and you donate now, I mean, it, it actually makes sense because it'll be read out on next on next fortnight's episode. Yes. True, true. But again, you know, if you donate and it's not. What ah! is it? And it's not Monday the 18th of April, then Indeed. you're you're just going to have to wait until next episode. I'm sorry. sorry. It's just how time works. Yeah. We can't control it. Who would like an question? Yeah, please. First question for episode 100 comes from Kells at Kelly Marshall 98 on Twitter, who asks, if you had to start a government purely made out of fictional advertising characters, i.e. Pringles Man, Tony the Tiger, etc., what would you do and who would take which department? So I think we can work together on this. I was about to suggest Tony the Tiger. uh, Oh, really? For perhaps sort of 
kind of social issues because he's such a good motivator. Shall I look up? He just the thinks everything is positions. great. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. see if we can fill them. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. Um, I want actual Barry Scott. Yeah. For something. Did Not- it specify food or did it just say brands? Um, Advertising character, fictional okay. advertising characters, fictional not Barry, Barry Scott. Scott. <laughs> fictional, fictional advertising, advertising character. <laughs> I don't think Barry Scott's a real man. No, I think, I think, think he bloke. is. No, I think he might maybe be called Barry Scott in real life, but that's about it. And they they flick a switch on the back of his head before yeah. the advert goes on, and then he becomes. Hi, a fictional... I'm Barry Scott, and yeah. he just becomes full autom- automaton. Kind I'm of. the, the Chancellor test. of the Exchequer. <laughs> he could be the Chancellor. In fact, I'm calling it. He's Chancellor because he does the penny test all the time. Time, doesn't he? <laughs> now my old favourite, and he dips the penny in. Look at it, pulls it out. <laughs> not with new kitchen gun. Yeah, bang. Okay, I'm going to choose a few of these because there are some absolute bullshit titles. <laughs> okay, here, uh, including Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster, Downing Street Chief of Staff. Fuck off, the right what? honourable Steve Barclay, MP, MP for North East Cambridgeshire. Imagine being what given that. What a stupid that. role. So that's uh, a cabinet position. That's a it? cabinet position. There's, wow. there's like 30, apparently. Oh, oh my don't, God. Don't want that. Uh, okay, so we've got the Prime Minister, First Lord of the Treasury, Minister for the Union, Minister for the Civil Service. Uh, so the big cheese. Who is the big cheese at the top? Oh, who's the biggest of all advertising? Is it Crazy Frog? Is he the biggest <laughs> fictional What does he advertise? Character? Ringtones. <laughs> yeah. Jamster. Jamster. Defunct by penises, Perhaps. Oh. Um, yeah. Hmm. Uh, we need as many characters as possible, I suppose, don't we? Yeah. Uh, the Pringles man is obviously mm. he's he's large and in he's charge. like the, the 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 of the money. He's the money man. He's got yeah. that that kind of vibe about him. Yeah. One of you might need to Google some advertising characters because yeah, I'm, I'm just, dying. I'm yeah. like kind of drawing a blank at the moment. There's got to be some. I think we need to think quick. I think we've got okay, to. Okay. Do... Okay. Fine. The Prime Minister is. You remember is the, the crazy frog? Oh, okay. Or 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 the uh, <laughs> um, the. What's the what's the word for it? The uh, human, not humanoid, the anthropomorphized mm. uh, cheese string man who like used to ride a skateboard. <laughs> yeah, you remember yes. him? Yeah. And he had like yeah. dreadlocks because his hair peeled. Yeah. And, you remember the cheese string man? Yeah, get down with Prime that. Minister. Yeah. Okay, how do you feel about that? Yeah, how about uh, Deputy Prime Minister is not a real job. <laughs> That uh, could be um, the Pepper Chance- Army. <laughs> <laughs> the Pepper <laughs> Army one. Yeah, the, uh, the anthropomorphized Pepper Army. <laughs> <laughs> the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Who's good with money? Uncle Moneybags. Uncle yeah. from, from Monopoly. Monopoly. Yeah, okay. that sounds good. That might just be a character, though, rather than Yeah, but he sort character. of advertises it. Yeah. If he's, the, he's the face of Monopoly. Yeah. Okay, Secretary of State. Churchill the dog. Yeah. He oh, rides sk- now he's, he's yes. on a rebrand now. He's cool. Is he? So I think, yeah, he rides skateboards around and stuff. He's not just a nodding Whoa. dog. He's an actual bulldog. So. And Churchill, of course, he's got, he's got tenure. There you go. Okay. True, true. Minister for Women and Equalities. Who do we think? Probably, um, probably needs to be a woman. I'd yeah, have pro- that should, that's probably a good idea. Are C- there many female advertising fictional characters? There aren't that many, are there? Sheila's Wheels, the ladies in that car. <laughs> <laughs> They're real, Michael. Those are real women. <laughs> you don't know what Sheila fictional means. Yeah. <laughs> Sheila's wheels people are real. The titula- They're actors. The titular Sheila, then, who you never actually see. <laughs> so but... Sheila from Sheila's Wheels, yeah. the insurance company for women. For women, yeah. For cars for women. Well, because they're all well, about. Well, they're not really about equality. In fact, they're sort of for the opposite. Yes, they no. Got in tr- well, not in like I'm open to suggestions wheels. here. I'm, just, I'm literally just. My, my, I'm, I'm trying panicking. to think of just female advertising characters. Yeah, me too. I've suddenly realised how few there are. Um, I think you mean less. <laughs> Could we just maybe flip it on its head and say Mr. Muscle? <laughs> just the least appropriate man yeah. for the job. Yeah. Sure, I bet the women would love that. Yeah. And the equalities, whatever that means. I don't think it's on us that we can't think of any female characters. I think it's that apparently female characters seemingly don't sell We're going to get so well. many tweets. Yeah, we will. I bet it's going to be like, uh, you forgot about... There'll be a female character in like the the Coco Pops cartoon stuff, probably. That yeah. We're not thinking of. There's um, definitely a really obvious one that we're not thinking of. I'm certain. We, uh, you blew your load too early though, because surely the Secretary of State for Defense should be Mr. Muscle. Oh yeah, no, they should. Yeah. Um, well, I think we need to take a softer approach on uh, God, on, on defense. Even mm. looking at his fucking Wikipedia profile photo makes me just want to punch him right in his fucking face. <laughs> Mr. Muscle, yeah. Uh, no, I don't advise it, though. The Secretary of State for... Oh, did you know it was actually called this? The Secretary of State for leveling up. 
Oh, is that what, what it's called? Housing is that why they keep saying it? Minister for in- Intergovernmental uh, Relations, otherwise known as Michael Gove. So this is something we moan Ooh, about in the triple his... jump office. Oh, look Fucking... at his stupid face. Look at his stupid oh, cartoon Fuck. character. Don't you want to just punch his face? face. We moan in the triple jump office because obviously it's a it's a video gaming channel <laughs> office in there. Uh, and the government keep using this term, leveling up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we, I don't I don't think any of us realised it's the name of the actual cabinet position but wow okay that's mad maybe they gave it to him as a joke because everyone fucking hates him <laughs> i mean that needs to be a video game advertising character surely um lara but, lara croft feels like she's well if she's allowed then she should she have been the, all boundaries. the female um but i because i, cause I we my mind went to lara croft up. but she's more of a mascot of but then i suppose we allowed uncle money bags i don't mm. know it's mm. some it's real blurred very, lines it's difficult, say. it's difficult to say yeah. We've got two more uh secretary of state for education Who's going to teach you? Who's going to teach you stuff? Who is a mascot for education? El Nombre. It can't That's be just a character. El... <laughs> can't be Tony the Tiger because he thinks there's like eight R's in the word great. Yeah, he can't yeah, even... That, true, that yeah. fucking cat can't spell. Um, we're sort of stuck on foods, but I'm trying we to like... We really are, but they... That's, that's, that's why that's why they've banned food adverts now for yeah. kids because that's all we can remember. Uh... Is there anyone on Alphabet Spaghetti? What? Alphabet is spaghetti. Does that have a brand? Uh, like I don't a know. champion? Yeah. Has Heinz no, ever had it? They, they, they bring in like Coco. Barbie and like it other is minions. Time. Yeah, yeah like, they do. They kind of rotate. Excuse me. There's Coco the monkey. Um, yeah. There's the Nesquik bunny. Mm. Uh, Professor Wito. Hey! Professor Wito. Yes. Go. Secretary of State for Education. And finally, Secretary of State for Transport. <laughs> oh, now there's got to be one. Yeah, come on. We can do The this. Ricicles boy. I mean, he's got a rocket, hasn't he? I thought it was because he ran with bicycles. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. There must be a character who is in a vehicle. All I can think of are real, I say real fictional characters, <laughs> non-advertising fictional characters. There are so few of those now. What about the um... the other two ladies in the Sheila's Wheels? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, Sheila's, no, Sheila's say... probably got additional friends that we haven't seen, right? Is it... It's not Lloyd's TSB. Is that the horse? Oh, oh yeah, 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 that yeah. one. Because they're normally in a train, aren't they? The little kind of... They've got a train, I think. Yeah. Yes, they have a train. They've got like the weird haunted ghost children. Yeah. yeah. The ghost oh, people. I've got another one for f- the female uh, equality one. Yes. Yes. Uh, the Scottish widow's Scottish widow. There we go. Oh, yeah. The widow herself. Yeah. <laughs> Who just stands on a moor with a cloak on. Perfect. And widow come. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> shit uh who would like to do their thing for episode 100 please not me um <laughs> Peter, went you first went first last, last time. time so mikey i think it's you bud okay i've got a, i've got a big bump question boy Ooh. goes last that's fair that's fair so i've come with a tale of someone who really i always feel like i fell into where i am right now mm. but this man is just like that to the nth degree of like holy shit he made it to the top okay right. purely by accident and this is the tale of timothy dexter Right. Okay. In the vast... Watch your mic there, bud. Am I doing it again? Am I like, oh? Yeah, you got you to... That's it. I get there. Make, okay. out with the, make out with the Michael. How do you pronounce... Is it annals? It's annals, annals not of anals. history. The annals of history. Yeah, the anus of you history. You have to give us the yeah. sentence, of course. But, uh, <laughs> the vast annals of history. The vast yeah, rectal anals, cavities but... <laughs> of history. <laughs> In the vast annals of history, it can't surprise anyone that the occasional great man gets lost as records of them are sparse. Or what? Or were all burned by some rival empire. It is surprising, though, when there are, are men of whom there is possibly too much evidence who still disappear from most historical records. One of America's first eccentric rich guys, Lord Timothy Dexter. Sorry, but, eccentric rich guy is what they called him. That's 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 what they've dubbed him. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think it can, it's like well, you know, you, now now they're all over the place. I guess back in the day they were a lot more serious. This kind of bucked the trend of mm-hmm. you know now people are too much money shit posting on twitter yeah. <laughs> elon musk yes. um, oh elon musk okay. oh got him hmm. first in the east first in the west and the greatest philosopher in the western world is su- is just such a man if you haven't heard of timothy dexter before now then oh boy are you in for a treat <laughs> oh <laughs> can't wait Dexter was born just north of Boston, Massachusetts in 1747 to a modest family of tanners, making leather from hides. However, this wasn't a great way to make money, and, you know, Mr. Dexter had high hopes, high dreams. Mm. It was enough to make a living, sure, but certainly not enough to make the kind of fortune an ambitious man like Timothy Dexter would need. 
Naturally, he decided to go the route of marrying rich, specifically marrying the gloriously named Elizabeth Frothingham. Oh, oh that's, that's a good Frothingham. name. Frothingham. Yeah. I like that. I like that. And immediately start his future career of making insane business decisions. The American Revolutionary War was going on and it had shut down life in Boston almost entirely. The British closed the ports. Dexter, meanwhile, continued working and eagerly looked for ways to advance his status and wealth. The first step, Dexter decided, was holding a public office. Although he'd left school before his ninth birthday. Wow. So maybe was he not... going to be the minister for levelling up? By <laughs> we'll, just, we'll make a title for him. There you go. You're minister of levelling up. Beth Tanner boy. Beth, well minister done. Minister for falling into positions by the sounds of Ma- yes. Michael's preamble. Hello, yeah, Goes. Level. Goes yeah. <laughs> yeah. He left school before his ninth birthday. Dexter petitioned the town of Malden to appoint him to office. After a one-man letter-writing campaign, the town granted Dexter a title. Informer of the deer. Dexter's job was to track the deer population in town. Malden officials had invented the job to stop Dexter from pestering them. As town records revealed, the last deer had disappeared from the Malden woods 19 years before. Oh, dear. So it's like, here you go, kid. Go get lost in the woods. Yeah. And go count them deer. Now, with an official office, Dexter shifted his focus to financial success. He took his life savings and invested everything in continental dollars, the devalued currency printed by the Continental Congress. The Continental Congress had begun to print its own money to pay its troops. Most people would see that this money was ultimately based on nothing. It's essentially just like, here's some fun bucks. That's mm-hmm. how they paid people in the war. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, da, 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 da. So prevalent was this idea that a common phrase at the time was the, dismiss- the dismissive, it's, it's not worth a Continental. Timothy Dexter, however, thought that America was 100%, sure, 100% for sure going to work out and would never cheat its soldiers by giving them worthless currency. At the time, Dexter snatched up continental dollars for literally fractions of the penny each, which, as it turns out, would be the only way to make them valuable. After the ratification of the Constitution, (laughs) Alexander Hamilton convinced Congress to honour continental dollars at 1% of their face value. Certainly a massive loss to the soldiers paid in the worthless paper, but a massive boon for Timothy Dexter since 1% of a dollar is a penny. And so if you bought them for a fraction, if he sells them, that's straight profit, baby. Yeah. Basic math fact, that is more than a fraction of a penny. Timothy, Timothy Dexter at this point was now quite wealthy. And to rub it in everyone's faces, he bought property in the middle of the richest neighborhood he could find and began construction of an ostentatious mansion. Now, usually a word like ostentatious can only be subjective. But in this rare instance, I think there may be a case that the house was objectively ostentatious. Oh, what's his really? name again? Uh, Timothy Dexter. Timothy Dexter I Mansion. I keep thinking you're going to say Timothy Dalton, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Skinner. Mm. It was so over the top that Elizabeth Frothingham decided to move out of the house into another house located in the general vicinity just so she didn't have to look at it anymore. The mansion, unusually its design from the get-go, was surrounded by 40 massive wooden statues of men Dexter considered to be heroes from American revolutionaries like George Washington to a wide variety of Frenchmen he considered brothers in arms. Okay. Dexter was so enamoured by the French that he even, even gave a speech in French in one instance, despite the fact that in his own words... Is there, you, you got, I didn't, it's pretty ostentatious. I didn't actually look, look it up. There. I just took the word That's, that's a, a art of it. But wow! It's just got wow! Load, all the statues of, on little podiums. Yeah, it's yeah. got loads of columns with all of them on. It looks like, but because they're coloured in, it looks like he's captured the real men and put, <laughs> <laughs> put them up there. I think you paid like $2,000 a statue, so like 80 grand in statues. Oh I think God. that's an all-time in one year as well, so that's quite a lot. Get a job, Timothy. Come on. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, so um, Dick, Dexter was so enamoured by the French that he even gave a speech in French in one instance, despite the fact that, in his own words, the public, considering the small chance I've had to learn French, are a little surprised to hear of my having endeavoured to speak it. So yes, just 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 for a speech, he decided to learn French, and I think it was a pretty, pretty disastrous. Mm-hmm. Right, he did fair. so under a statue of Thomas Jefferson as well. Oh. Uh, Dexter commanded a painter to write... Oh, wait, no, I, I, I led on a sentence there. He didn't He didn't do that speech under it. Okay, statue. Michael's reaching back down to get his <laughs> paper that he threw away. Full stop. Yes. Under a, under. Sta- under a statue of Thomas Jefferson, 
There we go. There we go. Dexter commanded a painter to write author of the Constitution. When the I pa- thought that was an oddly specific detail that he learned French under a statue of <laughs> Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> It's the only way to do it. If That's you never, his classroom. You haven't lived unless you've learned French under a statue. Oh, of course, sir. Uh, when the painter wrote author of the Declaration of Independence, which we actually did, not author of the Constitution, and insisted that it was correct, Dexter became so irate that he pulled a gun and shot at the man, barely missing. Oh. That's the kind of man you don't say no to. You just go along with him. Wow. Ooh wee. Moving on from here, Dexter began involving himself in some absolutely wild schemes. First, it was suggested that nobody in the West Indies had ever heard of a bed warming pan before and that the market there was wide open. Oh. And uh, I think a bed warming pan, as the name implies, is a pan filled with warm embers that got placed under your covers to pre-warm your bed Mm -hmm. before you slept in it. West Indies tropical yeah mm-hmm. so maybe you don't need any extra warming there my grandparents used to have one hung on their wall really uh, it was just like ornamental but yeah was it sort of like a brassy type yeah thing? yeah i think i've seen those. there's oh, one really? in um, pirates of the caribbean there's like a very fleeting shot in like the first film where grandma's got that yeah <laughs> see i'm probably the only person who even noticed that there is one but i was like oh yeah it's one of those but <laughs> from, it's like actually grandma's being house. used which is why i found it interesting right. like, oh that's what that's for how big are they i'm actually curious now they're like it's like a long stick like like that yeah and then kind of a sort of a banjo that, shaped that big, yeah a bit like banjo shaped mm, yeah mm, but mm. with like a big brass yeah end to def- <laughs> yeah. diffuse yeah. the yes <laughs> a b end if you will yeah yes so the west indies obviously a tropical country had zero need to warm their beds mm. <laughs> oh sorry that's did, the beer did, that, that, that thing was a bit much for me <laughs> However, upon arriving with a literal boatload of useless goods to the West Indies, 42,000 pans to be exact. Oh, that is a lot of pans. That's it a is. lot of pans. One of the locals realised that the pans would work perfectly for ladling molasses. So, okay. So, yeah, they managed... so he's failed upwards again. Yeah, so he's just going on like he's right. turned up with this, this useless product that actually turns out is quite useful, just not how he intended. Yeah. What a winkle. Oh, a few weeks later, Dexter's boat returned home to him fully sold out of bed warming pans. Realising that the people of the West Indies must be cold, Dexter doubled down and sent a shipment of mittens and warm woolen clothes. This time, Dexter was even more miraculously lucky, as his boat arrived just in the nick of time to catch an expedition heading to Siberia oh. that could desperately use a whole shipment of, shipment of warm clothes. What the Next, hell? Dexter literally herded cats, rounding up hundreds of strays and shipping them to the Caribbean to act as pest control. Then he told his customers that every Christian family needed a Bible or else they would go to hell. Mm. Unsurprisingly, this message came with a boatload of Bibles, uh, which Dexter had bought wholesale for dirt cheap. And he just, he just kind of, he kind of got this grift going where he could sell anything and just yeah. somehow turn just a massive, got lucky. massive profit. It's because he had a Bible and read it every day. Exactly. Damn right. Damn right. Exactly. From all this business success, Dexter began to see himself as something of the new class of gentry. By 1800, he began going by the title of Lord Dexter, despite the fact that he had no claim to nobility and was supposedly a fierce American patriot. Perhaps the worst business idea Lord Dexter ever had was sh- shipping coal in Newcastle. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the price of it? <laughs> Have you seen the price of coal? <laughs> So Newcastle, for those who don't know, which I think three of us are relatively familiar with this, mm-hmm. um, is a coal mining city. It's built on it. It's, it's basically like how Newcastle got its start and how it, why it is what it is today. Yeah. And the last thing they would ever need is coal. Unless, of course, you just so happen to arrive in the middle of a massive miners' strike. Oh. Yeah. This Me- man. Is a lucky git. Meaning that the coal-starved city would pay a premium for it. And in the streets, all you could hear was, have you seen the, have price, you of seen the price of it? <laughs> Extra 50s. <50s worth. laughs> and that's exactly what happened. It is, they just snapped it all up at a heavily increased price. Wow. So you may be asking yourself right now, was this guy really crazy? Or was he actually a super genius playing three-dimensional business chess? Mm. Well, to answer that question, we should maybe point out that upon learning that English nobility would write books, then freely distribute them to libraries and institutions, Dexter decided to do most of that. He would write an absolutely unique book, A Pickle for the Knowing Ones, or Plain Truths in a Homespun Dress, and began distributing free copies to anyone who happened to pass by. Uh, The book is, it's something, it's really hard to get it across in text because 
when you read it out, it's just, it's just, it's, there's no punctuation in the whole thing. Everything's misspelled. Like oh, even gosh. like by all timey standards, it's just, it's wow. completely wrong. And it's just this 40 page book of just nonsense that this guy decided to write and distribute. Wow. Um, I've got like, an extract from it here, but okay. the humor comes from it, from it all being misspelled. So I'm, spelled I-M-E, the first lord of the United, spelled Y-O-U-N-I-T-E-D, all one word, states of Mary Carey. Now, of Newburyport, it is the voice of the people. I can't help it, so let it go. To go spelled G-O-U-E. Now, as I must be lord, there will be follow. Many more lords pretty sound, for it don't hurt. A cat, nor the mouse, nor the sun, nor the water, nor the ear. Then gow, on all is easy. Now, bond's broken, all is well. Sounds all in like love. a Nicki Minaj rap. <laughs> <laughs> is that bees in Ninky, the Ninky Minjaj? Ninky Minjaj. Minjaj. Um, so yeah, it, I've got a, a big extra from that, but it's definitely funny in text. I highly recommend it. It is good. Wow. But the book takes some pretty nasty turns, oh. especially when he's talking about his wife. Oh. Uh, of whom he says, pity me that I have been in hell 35 years in this world with the ghost, a woman I married. Jesus oh, Christ. Uh, when he released his book, there was like numerous complaints about the lack of punctuation. Mm. So he, he released a second book that was nothing but punctuation. Oh, <laughs> it was just a string God. of full stops and exclamation marks. <laughs> it's quite good. I think that's that's good. That's, that's good. Petty as hell. He's sort oh. of irritating me as I hear more and more. He's kind of fun. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, but he's, I, mean, he's a, I think we've all been employed often. by someone who sounds a lot <laughs> yeah. like this, actually. Sounds familiar. Uh, throughout his life, Timothy Dexter surrounded himself with a menagerie of lunatics interspersed with some genuinely incredible people. One uncredited, uncredited lunatic, that's not my words, that's someone else, was John P., a self-proclaimed professor who, despite lacking any scientific education or training, would espouse his supposedly scientific knowledge. Espouse? Is that how I'm, am I saying yes. that right? Yeah, espouse? yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Would, uh, espousi. Espousi. Yeah, it's espousi. His supposedly scientific knowledge upon anyone who would listen. Another of his troop was Madame Hooper, a fortune teller who must have a pretty good track record if she was involved in any of Dexter's schemes. As you may yeah. expect, based on his book, his wife was not part of the troop, and Dexter was known to cavort with many, many women. Mm-hmm. Naughty boy, mm-hmm. naughty boy. Mm-hmm. After living such an unusual life, Lord Dexter found himself curious about what his legacy would be after he was gone. I think this is Dexter's magnum opus now. Right. As such, he did what any of us would do in that situation and he faked his own death. Of course he did. So that he could spy on his own funeral. (laughs) Brilliant. So he had a massive mausoleum built for himself on his property which was fine for a fake funeral but later was deemed to be too unsafely built for a mausoleum and when you think about it now how safe does a structure for a a dead man need to be? I mean it's a business. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Might uh, as well just stick him in a building site. Uh, yeah, uh, just throw me off a out. cliff into this. Uh, yeah, whatever. Game. Perhaps uncharacteristically, he f- he let his family in on the truth, but then demanded they act the part during the funeral. While his kids seemed to do a fine job, <laughs> he had kids at this point. He's like, pretend daddy's dead. All right. By how fine. many? No, oh, how many partners? I oh. just smashed the microphone. Smash that mic button. Still, is it just still Lady Frothington? I think like I mean, is is he still with Lady Frothington? But I think he's um. He's getting his froth all yeah. with another lady. Oh. Oh. oh, Michael. Oh, that's not Michael, good. Michael, that's, that's quite uncouth. How that's crude. Disgusting. Mm. Um, while his kids seemed to do a fine job, his wife, Elizabeth, apparently wasn't getting an Oscar for her performance. Lord Dexter somehow got her outside so he could yell at her, ultimately leading to a physical fight so loud it drew a crowd. Wow. The crowd, all in attendance of the funeral for the man they currently saw beating his own wife, <laughs> oh my God. didn't know how to react. Lord Dexter decided to act as if nothing had happened and spent the rest of the funeral acting as if he was hosting a huge party. So, I'm so glad, guys. Hey. It's all good. Yeah, I'm actually doing Got it. Yeah, but let's just have a good time. Yeah, it's fine. I beat my wife. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I'm Dexter and I hit my wife. <laughs> Eventually, Timothy Dexter kicked the bucket for real, going at the age of 59. Wow. And no one bothered to turn up. <laughs> <laughs> on October 26th, 1806. Oh, he okay. left much of his money to charity. So he's, he's a good man. He's a he's good a, man after a, all that. Like the bo- good one man. of the best the wife beaters I've ever <laughs> heard. <laughs> like the boy, you, you could call him the, the, you could call him the, the boy who died a wolf. Oh, you, yeah, I that would that. have been relevant, like a few sentences. Uh, maybe just a bit. I was just further ago. A bit too quiet. I thought that's it was going to be a joke about charity, but no, 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 no. no, 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 no. It was good, though. It's a really good one. Thank you, well thank done. you, well yeah. thank you, Michael. Do you think it's a good one? I think it was a fantastic Don't lie to one, me, Michael. No, I think it's fantastic. Look me in the eyes, Ben. We can do this now because it's on video. Fantastic. Oh, fantastic. Felt that in my soul. 
The statues outside of his house, which had cost him thousands, sold only for a few dollars each. Or Continental were... dollars? Mm. Good question. Mm. Pence. Or, were... <laughs> <laughs> or they were burned after nobody wanted them. Oh, wow. His strange house was turned into a tavern, which was eventually destroyed when painters decided to remove old paint using torches. <laughs> Is that how it ends? That's There's the got end. to be a better way. <laughs> That's the end of Timothy. <laughs> how do we get this paint off? Set fire to Probably it. fire, right? Knock down the building. What yeah. if we took the, like, the building off the paint instead of the paint <laughs> off the building? <laughs> hey, I mean, they got rid of the paint. Yeah. Oh, That's the tale of Timothy Mike. Dexter. Wow. Wife Never Peter, heard of this cat guy. seller, and cool peddler. What a trip. Yeah. In great time. Crabidal. Ready for another question? Yeah, I've sort of broke, even though I've hardly had any alcohol, I've broken just a fresh water seal uh, and you I need a wee wee I just can't wait Chivam until the end of it go, go for a wee wee I, well, a wee -wee I might be well. able to do you <laughs> yeah it's really going well, through am me. I just going to sit here well you can ask the question ask the question and then we have yeah. a pee break and come back should I call one of you I'll put you on loudspeaker what from the, so you can go to the wee? bathroom yeah if you want what did you say I'll call one of you and put you on loudspeaker oh yeah no that's weird no. we have to stand really close I think we just go maybe we go one at a time so we just do a little to pass each other the phone no, I just mean one of us can go to the loo and the other one can answer the question with you. No. And then when they come back, we can no. swap. No. 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 Both, get your phone both out. Both we. While holding your right willy. Now. <laughs> What's the question? FaceTime me from the bathroom. We're both about to wet ourselves, so please ask, <laughs> ask the question. James. Yeah. James. At Corrosion Audio asks, mm. other than the obvious Regent Theatre in the historic town of Stoke-on-Trent. Yeah. What would be the dream venue for a Vidiot's live event? Peter Ross and go to the toilet. Oh, uh, okay. Run. Oh. Run, Peter. Sorry, Mike, I'll be running. Run. <laughs> the dream. So I mean, it's kind of got to be semi-related to... Where was Glitch going to be? That was the Newcastle. Of life. Probably the whatever the hell the arena is. The Utilita Arena or whatever the fuck it's called mm. now. No, we can do better than that. What is like peak, peak Vidiot's? Well, apart from the Regent's Theatre in the historic town of Stoke-on-Trent. Of course, of course, of course. On the River Trent. So I think Stoke-on-Trent's out of the question. We've got to be a bit more adventurous. Yeah. You know there's that Mr. Blo the abandoned Mr. Blobby theme park? No, I absolutely have do not have never heard, heard of this. No, 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 I've not heard of this. I highly recommend looking. There's a YouTube video of like an urban It's a explorer. defunct land kind of thing. Yeah, oh, like okay. it's, it, but it's just like it's this theme park. Um, I think it was only open for a couple of years and it mm. just flopped. And so this land is just laid desolate, but there's like fun houses built, Mr. Blobby's everywhere. There. Like, yeah, and it's Damn. just these horrifying statues. I'm going to show you. Everyone at home, I want you to Google it as well. Mr. Blobby theme park. Yeah. I think we could take it over quite cheaply. Um, we could probably buy the whole thing. Like, so like Mr. Blobby's house is there. And just, oh, just weird. after years, it's just it's just become this... It looks like the, sh the Shire a bit. Did you see the Urbex? <laughs> Does not. <laughs> Shut up. Did you ever see the Urbex? Oh, Crinkly Bottom is what it's called. Of course it fucking is. Did you? Because he's got like weird crinkly skin when he like bends any mm. limb at all. Did you ever see the Urbex video where they found the Tots TV house? No. And it's just like in the middle of... It's between like three fields in this sort of triangle-shaped bit of woodland that's wedged between and it's all flooded, but it's there. Yeah. Just telling Michael about the uh, Tots TV house. Go on, yes. Michael, we time. No, I don't want to finish my thing now because... We're talking about Mr. Blobby's house. Yes. Is that the there's, venue? There's, there's an We're thinking about Have it. Have you heard about the ab abandoned Mr. Blobby theme park called Crinkly Bottom? <laughs> uh, it sort of rings a bell now, but yeah, I don't know. I'm aware of the abandoned Tots TV house, though. I'm a tot, just wheezing tot. Tilly Tom. And, and, and tiny. Yeah. Like, that's the inside of Mr. Blobby's house. It looks like oh, a crack yeah, I've seen this. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I think where we would... Best to host a oh, video event. It's got the booster seat for the Bob, the Blobby baby, the Bobby baby, <laughs> in an abandoned right. Blobby Mr. Puppy. Blobby theme park. Yeah, I think that'd be great. We get get it for cheap. Just yeah. put some tents. And on that note, I'm gonna go whiz. Okay. Go, go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there was a chair scoot sound, and then he biffed a microphone. Oh. Ball uh, out of play. Have you answered yet, Ben? No, I was going to be really it? basic and just say a theatre local to where I grew up, but I'm, I've not thought of like a, a peak Vidiot's location. Can you think of any? Remind, it was for the video, just for a Vidiot's live show. Is that what? Yeah, it's Vidiot's for? live event, a venue. Um, not necessarily a stage, maybe uh, just a convention hall. Uh, oh, and we can't say anywhere in Stoke on Trent. Can can't. We? It's already taken. It's already been said. The Regent Theatre. Uh, 
What about the one that fell down in Newcastle in the middle of the night and landed on a bus bus stop? Um, I think I saw this. And it was like really fortunate that it had happened in the night. Uh, I think it was a cinema, actually. Mike, mm. you probably know more about this, actually, and he's left right. the room. But uh, yeah, I think in the middle of the night... There was video of it, wasn't there? I think. Oh, there may have been video. Security footage. Oh, was there? I I never saw that, but I saw photos of it the morning after. And it landed on a bus shelter. um, And thankfully, it happened at like two in the morning or three in the morning and no one was hurt. But Mm. uh, that seems like... Seems like in the rubble of something This cinema is changing. Yes. Is kind of what I get from that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah. What if we, using the eggheads on Reddit, and maybe we even turn to the dark side and ask 4chan as well, mm. because they seem to be notoriously good at this, to harass people. Yeah. If we can get a team of crack internet experts to watch the garlic and chips video yes, and work out geographically where that is and host it in an adjacent field yeah. to the where the garlic and chips video was shot. <laughs> oh, like what sorry. do you think? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. How does that sound? That line alone. Okay. That could work. Yeah, if we can find that out. Peter thinks a cinema that fell in the street and crashed a... <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that one. Yeah, yeah. Which one was it? Or was it the Tyne side? I can't remember what it was yeah, called. Yeah, I don't know what it was called, yeah. but it happened at like three o'clock in the morning. I think it's still like old Matrix posters in there and stuff. So it's very like a time capsule, isn't it? Yeah, no one was injured. Do you ever get anxious going to the toilet on stream or whatever? Because no. I always think, maybe well, they're going to like make fun of me for being really quick. Oh, Michael. So every time... Whenever, I washed when it, my hands. I did wash my hands as well. Like yeah. spark. I didn't wash my hands, but I didn't go to the toilet. Okay. Every time I wee on stream, I was stand downstairs for two minutes afterwards. <laughs> really? Yeah. But I get back as fast as I can. No, I'm like, I don't want them to like accuse me of not washing my hands or doing an improper Who pace. cares if they do? I don't know. I don't know. This is my my. Don't wacky... let them control you. They're they're they're. <laughs> they're not. It's me controlling me. Amy, <laughs> they're makes... words on a screen. <laughs> Amy makes fun of me because uh, one time, and now she says this to me every time because I said it once. Uh, the our Domino's arrived or whatever it was, Pizza Hut, mm. and I we saw on the tracker that it was arriving and then we heard like a moped turn up so we knew it was there before he knocked on the door <laughs> so then i was standing by the front door yeah. and or, or by the the living room door which is two meters from the front door and he knocked on the door and i just stood there for like an extra three seconds or something and she went what are you doing you just knocked on the door answer the door answer the door and i said yeah but i don't want him to know that we're just standing here waiting so now whenever <laughs> Even if we're like sitting on the sofa and like we didn't realize he turned up, if they knock on the front door, she goes, Oh, you mustn't go too quick. Because <laughs> nah. well, he'll no, think we do the same sense, thing. Though, we yeah. do the same I thing. I do the yeah. same thing. I don't have, I have a front door, but I live in a flat. So mm. I, when I, when I get takeaway, which isn't as often as I used to, mm. I will like peer like the, the gif from Les Miserables where he's looking <laughs> through the window. I do that until I see like an unfamiliar car approach. <laughs> Yeah. And I I wait until I watch a man holding a hot bag walk up to like the the console where you put in the the door number to buzz the flat. And then even if I know that he's there, I will hover in the doorway and I won't pick up the phone straight away. I'll wait a minute because I don't want him to think I'm just, yeah, I don't want him to think that I'm just standing there. No, I was vindicated one time because one time I, I answered the door as he was coming up the street. Yeah. And then he was like, "Oh, you're eager." <laughs> I was like, "Wow, <laughs> that is not their place to say." No, it's I've not. had people, Rude. I've had delivery drivers say, "Oh, there's a lot of food there," and I was like, <gasps> "Whoa, that's, that's, that's really absolute, That is absolutely not what I am paying you to do. That's a horrendous yeah. thing. Fuck to say. you. That is awful. I'm yeah. benefiting Rude. you here. And yeah, it is a lot of food. <sighs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. what? And what? So what? Huh? Eh? <laughs> I've got a thing. Have you? Oh. Would you like my thing? Yes, please. Yeah, can we wait three to five seconds before you read yeah, it, Yeah, okay. Don't be too eager. Okay. Uh, so, I don't know if you guys know, but there is a, a satirical news website uh, on the internet called The Onion. <gasps> um, then on uh, Reddit, there's a subreddit called Not The Onion, Whoa. Whoa. where people post news real news stories that sound like they are satirical news stories. What? Uh, and then there is also on the internet a podcast called Podiots, which occasionally deals with Not The Onion as seems, a subreddit. Seems a bit far fetched. Right. <laughs> where people have to guess which ones are true and which ones are false. Yes. I bring you, in celebration of 100 episodes, Not The Podcast. Oh, let's go. Okay. okay. <laughs> so here I have got 10 episode titles which may or may not be real, oh. of our podcast. Oh, very okay, good. Of okay. mm-hmm. And I've got uh, six excerpts from episode descriptions. So, for example, for this episode, we will say, 
Mikey brings along a man who falls it it would be snappier than this falls into everything in life Peter <laughs> does a podcast quiz and Ben duh 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 oh. if you've not ever read a podcast I'm looking at the the monitor the viewfinder the, yeah mm. uh, but yeah if you've never read a description of any of our podcasts that's what they are yeah. so I've brought little snippets of those and you have to guess which ones are true and false okay so I'm going to read all of the uh, episode description ones first there are mm-hmm. six of those and then you can guess which ones are true and false. Not necessarily 50-50. Might be all, might be nothing. So you're not within those descriptions. You're not mismatching things. Like no, it's They'll either, either be all right or all wrong in each of those. Yeah, ones so each reading. line that I'm about to read you is either word for word correct or I just made it up. Okay, okay, okay. 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 So, Peter gets tinier. <laughs> Mikey talks body disposal. Ben's going to hell. Oh, okay. Mikey asks some difficult questions. Peter's off to wizarding school. And Ben's done some important research. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. So shall I go through those now and you can okay. say uh, yeah. podcast or not? Peter gets tinier. Can you so think of a podcast thing where that might be That's really difficult because that's quite a physical thing for an audio mm. podcast. Mm. Peter gets tinier. Mm. I'm not saying anything. Oh, oh, I'm just thinking, uh, what kind of thing could this be time. related to? Because sometimes they can be quite abstract the descriptions. Yeah, it's they can't. That's vague. the thing. You don't want to spoil what the Early thing on, is. they were literal as hell. It's like, <laughs> Michael dump. brings along a story about a Ed serial Gein. killer. Oh, yeah. He killed Which, many men and made nipple belts. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And now they get far more abstract. Mm. But yeah. Peter gets tinier. Peter gets tinier. I'm going to say that sounds like a real one to me. That sounds like a real description we've had. Okay. I like Maybe. it as a false one. It's cute. That one is false. Whoa! Damn. Made up. Damn. Mikey talks body disposal. I mean, I, I have in the past, but... That does sound right. I mean, all of these sound right to me. Yeah, yeah. But I don't... I can't... I can't off the top of my head think of a specific instance of body disposal. Hmm. That's the thing about me and Podius is after we record one... It's well, gone. It's yeah. just it's gone. So like yeah. if I like I, I was I, reading through these and I was like I don't know what that refers to. There are some true ones here that I've got the episode number for you, but uh, I don't know what what the context. What, is. And I tried to scrub through and find out, but unless you have the timestamps, <laughs> no, it can be it can be hard. And to who's going to put those in a podcast? Yeah. Huh? not us. I'm, I'm going to say because it's so in theme with my history of just horrible body it's things. Let's say true. Ben, you think true? Say that's true. This one's a bit cheeky. This is the only real cheeky one. Uh, that one is not true. Ooh, come on. I uh, made that one up, and then I realized later, as I was scrubbing through, that there is one called, it's more specific, it's Michael uh, walks us through his serial killer habits if he was a serial killer. I don't even remember doing that. Ooh. I know, it's a very early one, which is why it's so wordy as well. My serial killer it's habits. Like, you know, my, my you've not used a single lesson you learned. <laughs> it's like, the ver- so it's not just the body disposal you would do, it's like uh, method of killing, I guess, and how to get rid of the Oh, the I think weapon. I remember this now. It's like, if we were serial killers, yeah, like keep it light do? on this podcast. But that one's a little bit, little bit harsh, because I did make it up, but then it turns out to be sort of a real one. Uh, okay, here we go. Ben's going to hell. Yeah, that's real. That's real. That one is real. Yeah. That's from episode 25. I don't know why you're going to hell, but you are. <laughs> probably just didn't help someone. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it might be like an anecdote. Um, yeah, probably yeah. just felt bad about something. Kicking kids off a ride. That does Thought happen. Park. That has happened. Yeah. <laughs> that yes. will happen again. <laughs> um, Mikey asks some difficult questions. <laughs> Bit of a vague that sounds, that, that sounds really potty at sea. That's so vague, though. I'm going to go with my first. That's not real. Okay. I'm going to say that's real. That one is real. So episode 17. No idea what the questions are. <laughs> I did try and find out, but I don't know. Um, so there you go. You, you guys can so check. Difficult you can let us know in the comments, Good. maybe. Good. Yeah. Uh, Peter's <laughs> off to wizarding school. Yes, this is true. I'm gonna. I'm gonna agree. It just feels true. I do not remember this at all, but it is true. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's I don't probably know what it was. some weird capitia about some magic yeah, shit. Yeah, right? maybe. maybe. Some I don't magic know. Magic shit. Who knows? And the last one. Yeah. Ben's done some important research. Mm. We do that every week. We do. We're always doing it. We yeah. all learn something. Every poddy. It's, I'm going to say that's not true. I'm going to say that's true. That one is not true. Whoa! Yeah. I don't uh, know who, who guessed which ones, but... That one was 
uh, intentionally supposed to allude to perhaps um, white supremacy. Oh, oh uh, of course. I guess in, yes. in a way that was group research. We did yeah. the poll as as idiots, didn't we? Well, right? someone let, someone spearheaded it. So yeah. now we've got episode titles. There are ten of these. Okay. okay. Um, and again, it could, it could be all true, all false, or a mixture. Yep. So here we go. I'll go through them all. Mm-hmm. The big plop. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so poddy. Not, <laughs> not the onion. Pukaki, as in Bukaki, yeah. K-A-K-E. Pigeon powered. Devastated. <laughs> get the flump. A bit much. Naked jungle. <laughs> horse dance. And ghost piss. Ghost. Wow, they all just sound like potty etc. Don't they? I know some of those are real. I recognize some of those. Yeah. I will warn you that if I've maybe made some of these up, some of the made up ones might be completely made up, but some of them might be things that I know we've talked about, oh. but the episode wasn't called, Sneaky wasn't wasn't named devil. after that okay. topic. That I know. Hey boy. Now, we all three of us named all these episodes ourselves, so we, we should know. Yes. yes. You know, statistically, about two thirds of these you guys may have named, but mm. we'll see. We'll see. So, the big plop, real or fake? I'm going to say that's real. That sounds like a really like single digit episode title so i'm gonna i'm gonna say that's real it's an episode 41 title wow actually. yeah that's, that's real it. not the onion i don't think that's real i think no i might be in the first time you brought along not the onion as a thing so i'm gonna say that's real it's false whoa yeah, but that's what i was going for that it might uh, have been you the got first, me you got onion. me hook line and yeah. sink it mm-hmm. pukaki that's real uh, yeah that feels real that is made up what oh! we haven't done pukaki no we've not um, have we done poo cake? We've done. <laughs> have we done boo cake. <laughs> we've done um, book ache. B o o k. You know the way right, you right, right. uh, want to shit yourself in a in a Japanese yeah. bookshop. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That was book space ache. But I changed <laughs> it to pukaki. Okay. Uh, pigeon powered. Not real. I feel like we've d- you did a- you brought along a Wikipedia of a pigeon thing, so I'm gonna say true. It's a little trick, Mikey. You're right. You're, it's it's false. It's made up. But there was an episode called "But with a Pigeon." Ah, oh, there we go. That's okay. what I'm thinking of. Devastated. That's real. That's real. It is. Do you guys know what that is? That was episode. That nine. sounds like the one where I brought the rain from the London area. Yeah, along. yeah, yeah. Uh, that sounds yeah, about right. Right. My son couldn't she get in your con. Devastated. 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 Yeah, yeah. That was episode nine. Apparently, mm. uh, get the flump. That's real. That's real. I recognise it. That's real. Episode fifteen. I don't get know the, the context flump. of that. Mm-hmm. No. We know what flumps are, but I don't know why we would get one. No. No idea. A bit much. I don't think that's real. No. I think you could you want for like a big time. That's a red there. herring there. Yeah, 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 I know your games yeah. now, Peter. You yeah. do. We're getting near the end. Three more. Naked jungle. That's real. That's real. That one is real. Yes. Yeah. We Got did that was episode twenty nine. How could you not name the episode Rip after Chegg. that? Rip Chegg. Rip Chegg. Scott Chegg. <laughs> uh horse dance. <laughs> that seems real. I remember that one because that was where one of you brought along Bin Laden's files. Bin Laden's files, 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 yeah. yeah. Horse dance in there. Question but, is whether we named the episode. Oh, after that. Oh, she. But, yeah, but I think don't let me sway real. you. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say. I'm that. gonna say it's real. Yeah, that seems. Like it a is good real. Episode. Yeah. Horse yeah. dance, and the final one, ghost piss. Not real. Not real. Not real. Well hey. done, because oh, we have done seven five. To me. We have done Ben's. How did you keep track of that? <laughs> I have done my fingers. Ah, 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 his twenty man. fingers. We did uh, obviously talk about Ben's uh, hotel ghost yes, piss. The ghost piss. The oh, piss in Ben's that, bed. Yes, but yes. I don't think the episode, or if the episode was named after it, it was called something else. It's an early anecdote, that's for yeah, sure. It was. Wow. So there you go. Just it was only a quick one, but uh, a that's little a trip down one. podcast memory lane. There. Thank you, Peter. Thank you well done, much, everyone. Peter. Well done, you. Hey, Who look at us. You? Yeah. Who'd have thought? Not me. Not me. This question comes from Harrison Kalman at Gooey Bugs Platoon for episode 100. Congratulations on the big 100. Hope the queen delivers a big 100 kilogram meat face on each of your doorsteps. <laughs> question. You need to make a time capsule that, we, that will be opened in 100 years time. What this is specific? Do you know much about time capsules? What seven vidiots items are you putting in oh. for the future to discover? Seven. I don't know that much about time. I don't think there's any precedent for time capsules. I think they've just given Only us seven. 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 I would like to put a frozen meat face in there and see if it's... Or no, maybe, because that probably would just thaw out and then go, because it's sausage meat. A wooden carving of a meat face. Well, no, oh, no, maybe. Oh. But in terms of foodstuffs that might survive 100 years, yes. Billy Bear Ham. Billy Bear Ham will. <laughs> I was going to say either that or a Feldhoyer's uh, like bumper sticker or something. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So we've got Billy Bearham in there. Yeah. Um, a Hannah Montana world tour, spot, world spotlight tour, Hannah Montana, the movie, the, the movie, game, the with game. a Wii Whatever, yeah. in there mm-hmm. too. Yeah, cool. Um, Ed Miliband signed a poster. Yeah, Because I think that's going to that's gonna really throw them. I was like, what, are these guys yep. politicians? They mm-hmm. seem to have some connections. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, one of those weird smelly squishies. So that <laughs> yeah. when they open it in 100 years, <laughs> they go, whoa, <laughs> what is that? Uh, one of the custom Billy family members would keep the original Billy out, obviously. Yeah. But like some sort of Billy family member. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cute. Yeah. 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 Chummy Joey. Uh, a snowy, snowy Joey. Snowy Joey, sorry. So a snowy Joey, that I, wouldn't go out of date. Yeah, no. I think that would, that, that's like cockroaches. They could last or anything. Yeah. And we have one more. One more Ooh. to go in there. Um, what, what, what's like one thing that could really epitomize Poddy? It's in one, just... Oh. Maybe the, uh, well, no. I was going to say the, the stress sausage. But it's just sort of a torn USB and stick deflated. with maybe the announcement <laughs> on it. <laughs> yeah. Or the seventh thing could be that we dig it up a year after it's buried and uh, erase all evidence of it yeah. ever existing. That's the seventh thing. <laughs> and just leave a note saying, sorry. Sorry. It, it wasn't was, financially it wasn't actually viable. Here. Sorry. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. what we do. Uh, uh, the seventh thing is a shovel that we don't put in the capsule, we put next to the burial site. And dig it up later. Yeah. Beautiful. That's yeah. yeah Beautiful. Great. Perfect. I'm quite excited about your thing. I have no idea what it is. Right. But I know that there's a, certainly a degree of audio. Yes. Oh. An element of audio. So for episode 100, I wanted to reach out to some of our best friends and see if they would record us some messages. Oh. It is Monday. My dudes. I reached out to people on Wednesday last week. So. <laughs> This could be uh, what some would consider a failure. Right. In, <laughs> in a lot of ways. Okay. But in some ways, I thought I'd just talk you through my process and mm. who I did reach out to because oh, yes, I yes. did get some promising responses and it may well end up that episode 101. Yeah. We could have some stuff have to some catch up. Yeah. So. Hello. I hope this email finds you well. My name is Ben Potter and I'm the co-host of a podcast called Podiot. We are approaching our 100th episode, and as big fans of Mr. Miliband's work, I am inquiring to see if he would be available to record a short congratulatory audio message and how much that might cost. Thank you for taking the time to read this, and I look forward to hearing from you, Ben. So I got Ed Miliband's email address off the government's website, ed.miliband.mp at parliament.uk. Nice. Right. No nice. reply. Okay. Oh, no replies. busy. He was on TV. Take him out day. of the capsule. <laughs> he doesn't just belong there. <laughs> Hello, I hope this email finds you well. My name is Ben Potter and I'm the co-host of a comedy podcast called Podiots. We are approaching our 100th episode and as big fans of Dave's work, I'm inquiring <laughs> to see if he would be available oh. to record a short congratulatory audio message and how much <laughs> this might cost. Thank you for taking time to read this and I look forward to hearing from you, Ben. Nothing. Oh. Not well, a no, I mean, that one's not surprising. Not yeah, that's He's fair. literally asked He's, yes, yes. to be left out. Hello, I hope this email finds you well. My name is Ben Potter and I'm the co-host of a comedy podcast called Podiots. Notice how I got rid of comedy when I emailed Ed. I did notice that, yes. yes. We are approaching our 100th episode and as big fans of Dick and Dom's work, I'm inquiring to see if they would be available to record a short congratulatory audio message in Hammer the Smite Cost. Nothing. Oh, that stings. That stings. You should have got in touch with the neighbor's cat instead. He's probably got a few more. Dave Chapman. I have heard from Dave Chapman. No, you haven't. No. Representation, and I am awaiting further <gasps> communication. What? Oh my God! I love Dave Chapman so much. I know you do. <laughs> <gasps> I know you do. Holy crap! Hello, I hope this email finds you well. My name is Ben Potter, and I'm the co-host of a comedy podcast called Podiots. We are approaching our 100th episode, and as big fan of Dave's work, different Dave. <laughs> Wait, I'm inquiring which... to see if he would be available to record a short congratulatory audio message, preferably as the neighbor's cat from Dick and Dom the Bungalow, <laughs> ah. and how much that might cost. Thank you for taking the time to read this, and I look forward to hearing, hearing from you. Ben. Hi, Ben. Dave will come back to you soon. Best wishes, Claire. <gasps> that was Ooh. Thursday. Will he indeed? Still, well, he bank does, holiday weekend. It is so... a bank holiday weekend. He does do podcast appearances he's been on like all kinds of he does really? interviews and stuff and just talks about kids tv and i, I think he might even be doing it for free just for fun wow so okay it's not Fingers hard crossed. to get hold of i don't think i also emailed neil buchanan through yeah. his website <laughs> haven't heard anything about oh, him. neil Did what you might happen head? didn't email head. hello <laughs> hello, hello. Yeah. congratulations well, is, why would we pay for that when you can just it just sounds like him yeah like that we don't <laughs> even need to pay for that no so I didn't hear back from any of them. There's a good chance that they all get back to me at once and I am several hundreds of pounds in the hole because <laughs> uh, I don't know how I can get back to Dick and Dom and say, oh, actually, it's too late now. Yeah, if, this, if they reply, you've got to say yes. 
So there are exciting times potentially in the future. I did also ask some friends who are a little more reliable, <laughs> yes. right? Actual friends of ours. Yes. Dave. Another Dave. <gasps> Irish Dave. Yeah. Irish he Dave. said yes. His family has COVID. He oh. has been unable to provide a voice message despite having four days to do it. Dave. Big, big disappointment in Dave, but I hope your family as well. Get well soon, oh, Dave, Dave and family. Much love. That's kiss, three kiss. Daves you got in touch with and yeah. they all let us down. Yeah. You know who didn't let us down? You know who will never, ever, 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 ever let us down? I know who. Hello, my friends. It is Simon Miller here. And if you want to get serious about this, I just had to get in touch and say congratulations for getting to episode 100. Now, I know there were some trials and tribulations and there were some ups and downs. <laughs> some people aren't going to get that and just think that I'm weird. But I am proud of you. I am happy for you. And I know the next 100 episodes of the podcast are going to be the best ones you have ever done. To the... You make me feel warm and... Hang on. <laughs> what was that? To I'm the... Pausing. You make me feel... I'm pa- I will try to pause it, but the buttons are really small. I just want to point out, as this goes on, I think it's more entertaining if you realise that this sentence never ends. <laughs> and his... <laughs> the inflection of his voice goes up and down and up. And it just doesn't stop. <laughs> and it's incredible in only the way that Simon Miller can possibly speak. Okay that even mainstream media will go back. Ah, Some people aren't going to get that and just think that I'm weird, but I am proud of you. I am happy for you. And I know the next 100 episodes of the podcast are going to be the best ones you have ever done to the point that even mainstream media will comment on it and say the rest of the podcast industry should shut down because nobody can do it better than you. That actually sounded like I was being (sighs) facetious. I wasn't. I mean it. I love you guys. You know this. You're very good to me. You make me feel warm and fuzzy in my tum tum, and I wish you nothing but all the success in the world every single day. And know that you're in my heart, you're in my head, you're in my lungs, and you are in my soul. We're cancer. This has now got a little bit creepy. It was always going to happen, but I love you. I'm here for you, and I look forward to hearing you in my ears <laughs> for the rest of my life. And I look forward to hearing you in my ears. What a lovely, positive man. He's so good, isn't he? he? Best boy. Just He's so best. good. He's broken his hand. He oh, has. I, uh, like, he broke his hand last weekend and he didn't say anything when I reached out and said, would you record something for Aww. us? And he said, yeah, absolutely. And then I, I chased him up this morning at the time of recording. He was like, oh, I'm really sorry, I broke my hand and I've like been really focused oh. on that day over the weekend. And I was like, oh, bud, no, don't worry about recording Simon. messages. No, 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 I'll record it right now for you. Oh. And he uh, went, Oh, with his <laughs> and clicked record. But oh. how good is that last twenty seconds where <laughs> it just keeps going, going, off the room. going? Forever. You're in my heart. You're in my prostate. You're in my. <laughs> you're in my lungs. But I love you. It's yeah. a little bit you. creepy, but I do. But I love we, you. We are going you to know get this. radiotherapy. <laughs> Hearing oh. his voice decapitated from his face. Yeah, he's got a little bit of Dave Benson in him. You think he's got like? I don't know, like yeah, just, I like, sort of know what you mean. Yeah, he's yeah. got a big, big DBP energy about him. He's fantastic. What a good boy. He is the only person who oh, came through. Really? A true friend. Of course he did. Yeah. yeah. So Ed Miliband, we'll see. <laughs> not voting for him again. Dave Benson Phillips, he's not. That's, that was a long shot. Yeah. That's, that was the longest. Yeah. That was a bigger reach than, Dave, you than said, Ed Miliband. Me and my friends have our podcast and that might have been enough. But if you did you say a comedy podcast yes, called Podius? Yes, yes I, I did. Goofed, you goofed. I Love did. from Ben. Uh, for our American listeners, people who don't know who Ed Miliband is, even you know, you may well have watched videos, but if you just listen to the podcast, Ed Miliband was the former leader of the Labour Party, who was uh but when when politicians could be uh sort of disgraced and removed from the public spotlight for something as harmless as eating a bacon, a bacon, sandwich. A bacon sandwich and looking weird. Uh, and not when they just are absolute monsters. Yes. That is Criminals. when he was removed. And he's one of those politicians where in hindsight, actually, he deserved a lot better. Yeah, he did. Um, yes, yes. And we had a signed photo of him on our wall. Ed Miliband, not gone back to us. Dave Benson Phillips will not get back to us. Dick and Dom might get back to us. Yeah. Waiting to hear from the neighbor's cat. Yeah. Maybe Neil Bucakes as well. Yeah, that'd who, be good. Who knows? I will give an update on episode 101 in a <laughs> month and a half yeah. when, when it, this eventually goes out. But that's my thing. <laughs> I enjoyed um, that. Your I thought thing. I thought my thing would end up sort of being an anecdotal thing because I have very little to show for my <laughs> efforts. Um, Dave's gonna uh, D- 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 Irish Dave is Dave gonna Brian. send uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. gonna send a message probably tomorrow you and it'll be too late. Feeling better, yeah, yeah, yeah. be sad, but yeah, I hope I hope it's his okay. family. Hope so his maybe, as well. you say, maybe episode one hundred and one. 
We'll I can't see. believe you reached out to Dave Benson Phillips by email. I'd, I'd be too terrified. To I just that. reached out to anyone and everyone, man. Mm. Like he was, you know, he's not special. He can't hurt you through email. <laughs> no, he can't. He can just ignore me, but I can annoy or him. Or open a email. portal in the yeah. corner. Oh, <laughs> shit. Room. Yes. Yes, yeah. he can. You ready for a final question? Yeah. Episode 100. Yes, please, ben. It's from Dominic at NintyDom2, who says, Episode 100, you get teleported to when Vidiot wasn't changing, except this time we get a split timeline, when we're Mikey and Ben leave together, and when we're Tiny Peter and Mike, it oh says, leave Mike. together. Okay. What are the triple jump channels of these timelines, and what would Ben and Peter be doing in these timelines? Probably not making any money if I'm involved, I think. Like, I don't, I'd like, you, you, you guys have, the, you know, you know how lists work. Well, I think, well, I, we do, well, yeah, we do, but it doesn't mean it works all the time. We, we know how this should true. work. We only sort of reworked it out when we started Triple Jump. I yeah. think, like, we obviously we had the experience of doing it in the first place, but I mean, to have had, if we'd had you as the editor of said lists in true tail end of what culture style at true, the start of true. any new venture, whether it was Triple Jump or anything else, they, that would have been a godsend. So, uh, don't. Don't put yourself down, Michael Johnson. <laughs> but what would our shared ventures be? Yeah, what would you two what, go and what's do? What's our common ground? Um, serial killers. We maybe do true crime. True crime. That'd be fun. Yeah. yeah. Pete and Mike's true crime Tuesdays. Yeah. <laughs> true it. crime Tuesdays. Tuesdays. That's it. Um, would that pay the bills? For yeah. You? yeah. I think, true yeah, well, it's, just, it's such high quality content. Yeah. And right. we would have a... That could maybe all be video content. And then we could do a podcast as well, as a lot of people do in true crime. But that could just be dedicated to what, how we would kill people ah, and how we would dispose okay. of the bodies, as yeah. you did talk about in episode something of Podiots. <laughs> yes. Mm. yes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's just a really kind of disturbing podcast that there's a, somehow a new episode every single week. And we're just talking about, yeah. <laughs> we get well, really specific as well. Like, Daniel Hawthorne, this is how I'd kill you. <laughs> oh, that's what we'd do. Yeah. And what would Ben be doing if we were doing yeah, a... I'd, yeah, what would I be doing? So you've gone to do that. Yeah. I think I would have, in both of these scenarios, and when we get to you as well, I think we've both already left Bristol. So we're not hanging around here. Yeah. Where would I go, though? What would I do? Yeah, would you go back up north? Would you go back home? To I don't know. The rents? Yeah, so I might, I might, honestly, if we're being totally sincere, I probably still would have reached out to Mr. Pachiti and just seen what yeah, if there well, was any yeah. work. Going. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And if you guys were going to go work on something that wasn't video game related, there's every chance that I might have gone yeah. back up to Newcastle anyway to help them with something. Mm. Uh, so maybe that's not very interesting. But like, splash damage. You, you remember me? Oh <laughs> God, yeah. Can you pay me? Can you pay me like barely minimum wage in London again? <laughs> yeah. Access maybe they've hired since yeah, we. True, since true. Potentially, changed. yeah. If that timeline lined up, yeah. Who knows? Mm. But I would. It would have meant staying in the southwest. Yeah, and it's shit here. Mike. Whoa, it does <laughs> suck. <laughs> but, I mean, you mean as we discussed earlier, you saw a man stealing a sign. A sign. From I did. Road. No, I saw a man attempting to steal a sign, which is almost worse yeah. because he couldn't even do it. The last time I had friends, they, in that Bristol. was in Newcastle. That whole war would have come away. Yeah. Yeah. It'd have been off down the road with several bricks as well. The first time I had some friends visiting Bristol, it was like just just outside of our flat. There's a bit of green and. We were walking out to start a grand old day and just a homeless man popped his head out of a tent and vomited everyone on the oh. floor. And I was like, welcome to Bristol. Lovely. And welcome. then, yeah, later that night, we kind of, we got friendly with some people. That sounds weird. Mm. We made mm. friends with some people. Were, yeah. You were dogging. Yeah. Yes, as yes. you do. As you do. That's right. the main activity here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we came back and one of the people was like a massive goth. Um, and just like we were all standing around drinking in our kitchen. And at some point he just went, you got any salt? And we're like, uh, yeah, sure, here you go. What do you need it for? Oh, I've got a wound. I want to go rub some salt in it. And so he wow. just ran into the kitchen and put salt in the wound, which that's not, wow. that's, that's what you do when you want to make it hurt more, not yeah. get, yeah. So he just ran off, put some salt in the wound and it made it all very weird and comfortable. Oh. And that was my friend's introduction to Bristol. Cool. Love it. That's awesome. Man. Do you love it here? Yeah. yeah if you really did like though, have to stay in, well, not necessarily stay in the Southwest, but if you and Mikey did something together. What would what we would do? do? What do you think? I feel like with your editing prowess. I feel like I'd, 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 be, I'd be the funnel for your voice. I think <laughs> <laughs> A megaphone, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I think we could do pretty much anything we wanted. Because I can, I can read a script and feign interest in any old mm. bollocks. Yeah. And you could... <laughs> <laughs> and you can make it look really good. Yeah. So yeah, we could probably missing the team. third ingredient there, which is the source of that. You need to read yeah. something. I need something to edit from. Like, what's that? Yeah, where does that come from? What's that from? big plug? Well, depending on what Peter's up to, if it's particularly inspiring, 
well, we could be following him around like there's a documentary crew, you know, mm-hmm. when he becomes a cult leader. Ben other becomes than, fast, the YouTube channel. <laughs> other than also probably putting feelers out with Adam and maybe, you know, Access or whoever, like, mm. our various industry friends. Uh, yeah. if, if we take that as red uh, and say no to that, then I might have potentially ended up doing a career change because at the time I was like, is there actually long term money and like wages to be had in this or is it just like is this not my game yeah um i now obviously feel like yes it's going well um but i could be you know uh well you always said you want to do something more physical and outdoorsy yeah I'd probably do something outdoorsy like go and like learn how to fo- do forestry or something like that be working in a in a field somewhere i think that's what i'd probably end up doing I yeah. don't know. Like, if it weren't for me jumping ship, like, to internally in Yorkshire Cars, I don't know where I'd be. Mm. Like, it's a weird thought. I've, I often, in my head, I'm like, can I go? I, I, couldn't, I couldn't go back to what culture because I think that would destroy me. But like, what if? It was mm. very simple back then. It was just, here's a, here's a voiceover, put the images to it. I'm like, yeah. yeah, good, I can do that. But mm-hmm. I don't think that's that's not got any, I think I would want to top myself if I did that for any longer, to be honest. You could go into, like, a video production role in pretty much anything. Yeah, yeah, I'd imagine sure. you still can. Yeah, be a hired gun. I'll make, I'll make images and audio for whatever it is you spout. Mm. You wouldn't even need to be a hired gun. You could you could be into, integral Ooh. to yeah. a company. Ooh, a leading voice, a visionary, if you will. Head video mm. board. All I know is how to make brandings around VHS tapes. <laughs> hey, you know more Perfect. than we do. There Join some sort of 80s. You could have become an editor for Booth. Yeah, there you go. Soft focus. There we go. Done Boop. some stuff for Booth. Boopy. Yeah. Hey, Boof, do you want to hire someone full time yeah. to do like three videos a year? I'm yeah. your guy. Hey, with me, it could be four. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> all right. Enough. All right. Let's not promise too much, Michael Johnson. <laughs> Lovely. There we are. That's what we'll be doing. That is episode 100 of the podcast. Thank you all so much for listening and all of your support. You're amazing and we love you. We do. We love you very um, much. Store.yogscast.com, Michael. What's that? Your darn tootin'. It is that. It is. It is Did that. Throw you off? Let me try that again. <laughs> Is there a store, Michael? Yeah, yeah. I didn't even listen. I was like, ah, store yeah. I know where this What's goes. What's that? Yes, there is. <laughs> yes. Mugs. Store.yorkscast.com. Shirts. Hoodie. Mugs. All of the above and not more. No. And none Just... of the below. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you want some lovely video, it's Clobber, as Peter's wearing under that hoodie, but we're not, I'm not going to make bah, him. Bah, I'm not always going to do it anyway. Bah, 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 bah. Whoa! It's like Whoa. a PS1 look. Wasn't that neat? The whole thing. It's just a bit of it. Bah, 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 bah. We are today. Well, as of recording this today, we went to the piss alley where yeah, we recorded that we did. promo. Um, Video is probably already out on the yeah, channel. Probably now. true. Probably mm-hmm. true. Yeah. yeah, check it out. Uh, we've check got a lovely assortment of tat and wares on that their website, and I highly recommend you buy some because it looks damn stylish. Mm. Yeah. Damn yeah, stylish. Sure do. Um, Keep an eye on the Yorkshire's Twitter for special promotions and other things. Mm-hmm. And uh, yes, go buy some. I'm a really good salesman, aren't I? You're doing great. I Michael. think so. I'm really proud of you. Yeah. YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, all.com forward slash Vidiots Official. Bit.ly forward slash Vidiots Official Discord. If you want to join our Discord and talk to like minded podiots folk, go say hello. There's like four of them, but they are there sometimes. So come say hi. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash Vidiots Official. We stream sometimes. On there, streamlabs.com forward slash poddy. It's donations. Donate three pounds or more to get a shout out at the beginning and the end of the show and join Pod Squad once again. Have you got your. Oh, I was just. I, I went on to bit.ly slash videos beach just to see if that was still a thing. <laughs> Is it? Is it? Takes you to the Turtle Beach website. Oh, okay. bit.ly slash vidyards beach. Don't go there. Don't, <laughs> don't do that. Go, don't go there. Don't do that. Don't we do that. won't get any money from it. Don't do that shit. Uh, yeah, we, there's a pod squad, and this is your lot for the pod squad. And it's it's happening now. Remember, if you haven't heard yourself here today, it's because we're recording this in mid April, and uh, your donation will be in episode 101. Or don't was, be alarmed. Or was in episode 50 if you didn't listen to that. Yes, yeah. it's split between these two episodes. Yeah. Okay, so are you ready, Michael? Tell us, please. We start with Mr. Blobby joins the Bobby. Uh, sex, young, homosexual, who is incredibly generous. Thank you so much. Ben does not fuck, smash my door. Mr. Blobby becomes a therapist. Hot Blobby, hot Blooby, sorry. Hot Blooby, <laughs> cherry, honey linear, the generous, friendly tree. Don't you eat those plops. <laughs> the generous Big Joe and the equally generous Big Joe 2, 
Electric Boogaloo and the secret oh, special yes. donation that came in at the end. Gregor Monkey, mm, Monkey Chippy. Thank you both. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, also, the very generous, you know it's all about the coom. Emily Lemons, Specky Becky, an extra 50s worth of donation. Katie Kinsolo, Vidiots might be a cult. And Raindrop Joy, Star Scourge uh, Babalooney, uh, who was very generous. Thank you very much. Finn Tristam, Hawkman 105, and Internet Explorer. Hmm. We've also got No Clue, Prince Beefcakes, Stroke My Trent, Please Ben, Serene is a Birch Bitch, Callum and Jess, Jester the Rogue, Scott's Cool Hug, M- Hugs McSnuggies, Lady Masquerade, and the very... Ge- oh, sorry, Scott's Cool Hugs McSnuggies was very generous. And also the very generous Okaru127. Thank you so much, all of you, for your donations. We really, really do appreciate it. Thanks. Streamlabs.com Thanks. forward slash podiest donations, three pounds or more. What's out on videos this week, Peter? <gasps> Not telling you. you got to wait for episode 101. Ooh. That's right. Yeah. That's it. We're going to make you wait. We're not doing it for 50 or 100. So wait, please. Please. Michael, where are you? At Powerboy on Twitter is the best place to keep up to date with all my shenanigans. Go look at it. It's good. Mm. And Twitch. I stream there on occasion. Maybe since recording this, I've streamed once. Who knows? And Peter, where are we? Uh, at Team Triple Jump, you can go over there and there's some video style content to look at. Uh, that's Ben and I. But also, we are on Twitter uh, at uh, that Peter Austin, myself, and confused underscore dude for Ben. Yeah, that's a correct. That's uh, a correct, it is. That is a correct. Uh, why not leave us an iTunes review or a review slash rating on your platform of choice? It helps something to do with... Al Gore's Rhythms. Al Gore's Rhythms. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. And thank you for all your support over the last technically 100 episodes because we did do episode 69 last episode. Fuck you. Fuck you. Um, And uh, here's to 100 more in the next three or four years or whatever. Uh, Do we have a final question for the folks at home? Um, What were those, all those like episodes about that i listed like what what were mikey's <laughs> what were questions all of them about why yes. did ben go do, to hell do the research i told you the numbers the episode numbers go and find out for us please 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 thanks thanks well, thanks for listening everyone we'll see you on the next whenever the hell it is that we all get together to do one of these hopefully not hopefully before not too long yeah. but it probably it will be yeah it, might be. it will be a long time i imagine <laughs> yeah. uh look after yourselves and we'll catch you next time much love Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye.